Hey, Dreamdale Films, rain is here. What's cold? Are you cold? Filmmaking has changed quite a lot in the recent years. With everyone having access to more and more fancy tools, it feels like now we're competing on who can do the craziest gimbal transition, the sickest drone maneuver, the flashiest edit, and it makes total sense in this world where everyone's in a rush and can swipe to the next post before even reading the title of this video. But if you have seen some of our latest videos, you might have noticed that our edits have become a little slower and our shots a lot simpler. When you start out nowadays, there is a similar, if not the same pattern for everyone. You get a camera, you get a lens, you get a gimbal, and now you call yourself a filmmaker. And when it comes to what we call cinematic footage, you probably think of these crazy gimbal moves, awesome seamless transitions, crazy drone shots, the edit needs to be fast, not boring, you throw in some light leaks, film burns, lots of transitions, and your video becomes this cinematic mess. You see, this is anything but cinematic for me. I understand why this style has become so popular, but after seeing a few so-called cinematic travel videos, I had a really hard time understanding what country is this because there were so many fast-paced shots of someone walking or running or fucking drinking water, I don't know. But the essence of the place itself was non-existent. Now, I don't want to sound like that 50-year-old daddy in Facebook comments complaining that your video is too quick and they couldn't see a thing, but in some way, they are right. After many years of making these kinds of travel videos my Myself, I just got tired of them because they all feel the same and I still can't feel the location, the atmosphere and so on. It certainly looks cool, but that's not enough for me. This is the reason we now often leave our gimbals and drones at home and go with the most basic yet the most underrated and overlooked tool ever, the tripod. Tripods is an interesting subject. They're super accessible, anyone knows what it does and how to use it, so why are people not using them? Well, it all comes down to the lack of patience and commitment. With tripods, it's not as simple as finding a random place, going into the POV mode and doing a sick gimbal move. This tool can certainly help you get the shot, but it cannot enhance it in any way. See, with a gimbal you could be filming the most boring subject ever, but as soon as you go into the vortex mode, people go, yeah, dude, that's so cool. But with a tripod, it's all about the subject, the composition and the framing, which makes them the easiest to pick up, but the hardest tools to master. But when you do that, the payoff is a lot more satisfying. It's hard to explain, but there is something truly fascinating in the simplicity of a tripod shot, if it's well executed, of course. It's that immersion. These shots linger on the screen for longer periods of time, in which you can really soak in the atmosphere, the textures, the location itself, and it really feels like you are there. There are no distractions. Like I said, it's all pure cinematography, and pulling it off requires trial and error, and thus, patience which many of us don't have. Sometimes it's due to our expectations. You might watch an amazing cinematic YouTube video shot on a tripod, then you ask that creator what tripod does he use, and then you buy the thing expecting the same result without putting any more effort into practicing, watching new tutorials, etc. And then of course it starts collecting dust because you already found your next purchase. The other thing which I mentioned earlier is commitment. You need to be committed to your shots. Yes, it requires a lot of walking, scouting for good compositions, fiddling around with the adjustments to get that sweet angle. It's definitely a time-consuming process. You might think that we always get our shots on the first try, but that is totally not the case. There have been many times when we get up at 4 a.m., drive 100 miles, shoot for three hours, and none of that footage comes out great but we're committed to the video. So we do the same routine on a different day in a different location. And most of the times it's not even the location's fault because many times it goes like this. I try for an hour, nothing works. I get anxious, then in my head I imagine a potentially great shot. Let's say here on top of this little cliff, but walking up there takes 15 minutes and some of your energy. So sometimes I just say, eh, whatever, and go home, which is a very toxic thing to do. Don't do this. Me and Gunders have this thing where we share these little ideas that come into our heads. And then the other person says, commitment. And there is no backing out. You have to do it. You have to get that shot. 
and usually that commitment is very rewarding and I never suggest backing out of it. Okay guys, I bet a lot of you want to know what tripod am I using for my videos and for the past couple of months already it has been this tripod from Siri which we used to shoot all of this footage for this video. It's a relatively affordable carbon fiber tripod that is light, solid and compact enough to go on the side of my camera bag. And gonna be honest, using this thing is smooth. You know, when I was about to buy my first tripod, I really didn't think much about it. After all, it's just a three-legged stand with a couple of knobs and really my only concern when buying it was size, weight and how smooth the head is. But, as you will later find out, there are a bunch of these little things which can really change your experience. Big ergonomic and smooth locks, sturdy legs to prevent accidental folds, easy operation with that tripod head so you can set up that shot quickly, can it go low for a dramatic time lapse, and can it go high enough to be eye level in an interview? Can it handle extreme weather conditions and not turn into shit afterwards? Does it have a secure base plate with a quick release system? And does this all come in a neat little compact and light package? Well, for me, this tripod from Siri checks all of the boxes. Well, except for the quick release plate, but uh, this one still takes me just three seconds to install, so it's not an issue at all. This tripod also has two mounting points, which are totally irrelevant to me, but for studio setups, I bet some of you guys will like this. You can also get the video head for this thing, which is quite nice, since if you balance the camera on this single axis, you don't have to turn any dials to reposition your camera. It just stays there, which is really sweet. I wouldn't say it's absolutely necessary though, I'll be using the stock head uh, just because it's smaller and allows me to go into portrait mode, but if you do a lot of panning, interviews and uh, if you have some spare cash, it's a nice thing to get. My only complaint about this tripod, and it's a real nitpick and more of a personal preference, but I would rather prefer not only this but all tripods to have this locking mechanism instead of these twisting locks. They are just a lot more practical and less finicky, but that's just my opinion. Anyway, I hope this video was interesting and helpful for for some of you guys. The point I was trying to make is not that you shouldn't use gimbals and tripods are better, no, I just feel that this type of filmmaking with mostly static shots is kind of being forgotten, I just wanted to show you that you can achieve awesome cinematic shots with little to no extra tools at all. And if you don't have a tripod you can just place your camera on your bag, we have done this a lot. And if you're interested in this sort of filmmaking, I would highly recommend seeing the movie Silence, which has many breathtaking shots with a very simple yet extremely effective cinematography, and it's also a great story too. Revenant also comes into my mind as it has some of the best cinematography I have ever seen. I think it had a lot less tripod shots, but the camera moves are still very very simple, so just watch both of these, you won't be disappointed. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video, subscribe to this channel for more awesome cinematic content, and and you know the drill. Peace out.